Hello and a very warm welcome to this Phil That Flies review of Jetstream Design's Paris Orly scenery for Microsoft Flight Simulator. As always I'm starting with an approach in the A32NX to give you a look at the surrounding area and also so that you can get a feel for the performance of this scenery on my system which is comprised of an i7-8700K processor with 32GB of RAM and a 1080 Ti graphics card. You can see my current graphics settings by visiting the community tab on my YouTube channel. There are some screenshots there. I'll leave you to watch the approach and landing in peace and I'll speak to you again when we're parked up at a gate. Then we'll take a good look around this airport in different weather and lighting conditions and I'll finish up by giving you my overall opinion on it. See you soon. Welcome to Paris Orly. We're parked up here at gate B41 at Orly 4 and we'll just have a quick look at the jetway connecting and then we'll begin our tour of the airport. Okay, so the jetway hood does go through the skin of the aircraft uh, by a fair margin. Not something that will probably bother you unless you're actively watching it connect. Once it's in there it looks pretty good. However, this jetway isn't long enough. You'll notice that we have a big gap in the middle of it once it's connected and we are parked up as we should be on the uh, A320 stop line as you can see down here. So that is a bit of a shame. There are things to like about the jetways though. They are quite nicely modelled, they're very nicely textured indeed, they've got a good amount of weathering and the tops are nicely reflective making use of PBR materials. So enough about jetways for now, I feel. Uh, let's move on to having a look at the terminal buildings and see how well modelled and textured they are. So you'll notice straight off we have some transparent glass and some interior modelling. But before we have a good look at that, let's just take a look at the exterior textures. So this uh, roof area, this canopy, the edge textures on it are pretty good. They're not super sharp if you get really close, you'll notice a bit of blurring. But certainly from, I would say, a couple of metres away, they look perfectly sharp and very realistic. So when you're pulling up in an aircraft, you won't have any problem with them. So you'll notice that the glass is nicely tinted from the outside and looking through it looks like a very convincing terminal interior. If we go inside, you'll notice that the glass is opaque. Now that's a little bit of a shame, but at the same time we saw it with Fly Tampers um, Las Vegas the other day, and I know that developers struggle to make glass that looks good from both inside and out, so better to have it looking good from the outside. If you are planning on venturing inside the terminal though, I think you'll be pretty pleased with the interior modeling. We've got some nice crisp advertising screens, uh, Wi-Fi signs, seats, and other things. So it's a pretty good effort at modeling the terminal. 
Moving along Orly 4 to the west, you'll notice that we have a mixture of transparent glass and flat textures used. And I have to say the flat textures are pretty impressive. We have a good amount of weathering, the windows look good, they are nice and reflective, and overall it's a pretty convincing airport environment. This is the main part of Orly 4 and you'll notice that here we have some scratches on the windows and they look pretty good in my opinion. You'll also notice we have a good amount of interior modelling and on this part of the terminal we have the opposite problem. As rather than being opaque the window panes actually disappear from the inside. Now I find this really interesting, I don't know enough about scenery development to explain the different techniques used to create transparent glass but I know that Jetstream Designs did a great job with Nantes of creating very realistic glass that was transparent from both inside and outside and the tint remained. So I am, I've got to be honest, a little bit disappointed they didn't manage it here but it is a very very small point. Overall this airport so far looks absolutely fantastic. Towards the western edge of Orly 4 we have the control tower and Jetstream Designs have done a fantastic job of modelling and texturing this. You'll notice that we don't have any transparent glass unfortunately but the textures at the top here do show a little bit of activity going on inside which is really nice to see. We've also got a good amount of dirt and weathering across the structure and overall I'm pretty impressed. This is Orly 3 and I thought I'd take this opportunity to show you some of the detailing on these gate structures. Um, I'm not entirely sure what these are called. Jetway connecting pieces? Piers? Someone could let me know in the comments. I would be very grateful indeed. Um, anyway, if we have a look over here, you'll notice that some sort of transparency has been applied to this material here. I don't know what this material actually is in real life, but I'd imagine it's some kind of a mesh structure. Anyway, it looks very, very good, not only because of this transparency, but also because of the rust spots and other weathered details that are included. It's really nice. And over at the terminal building itself, you'll notice we've got extensive use of transparent glass once again and some high quality interior modelling as well. This is Orly 2's pier and once again the quality of the texturing is absolutely fantastic. Nice crisp textures with a lot of detail included and some more of that great weathering. Here we have the main terminal building which as far as I can tell is split between Orly 2 and Orly 1 and just have a look at these fantastic reflections on this metalwork out the front. Very impressive stuff and we have transparent glass as well as you can see as we get closer. And if we pop inside again some very very nice interior modelling. And finally at the northwestern edge of the terminal complex we have Orly 1. This too has been modelled and textured to a very high standard and there are some really, really nice details included. You'll notice over here that we even have very, very high resolution signage pointing up to uh, the exit and, and the flight connections. So that's really nice to see. You'll probably have noticed by now as we have moved around the airport that we do have some static aircraft included. Everyone has a different opinion on these. Personally I'd like the option to turn them on or off. There are those who think they shouldn't be there at all because they take up the gates that you might want to park at. And there are those who think they should be everywhere because without them an airport looks lifeless. So I'll let you make up your own mind on that one. But one thing that I do like, and I think you'll all like as well, is the amount of ground clutter included. We have air stairs, baggage dollies, parked cars, and the airport really is full of life. Away from the main terminals, a lot of care has been taken in modelling some of the peripheral buildings, such as these hangars here, which very accurately match the real thing. And as we get down closer, you'll notice that the texture work is pretty good as well. A good amount of effort has been put into modelling the landside areas as well. You'll notice the terminal signs, uh, you'll notice the construction site for the Metro Line 14 extension work, and you'll also notice some really nice texturing on the landside parts of the terminal buildings. The front of the Terminal 4 building is particularly impressive and a lot of work has been put into recreating this rather nice artwork.
it's ground texture time and I have to say the ground textures at this airport have really really impressed me. The materials used and their colours are very carefully matched to the real thing. There's a good amount of dirt on the ground, good amount of discoloration, not every concrete slab is exactly the same colour um, and overall the effect is very very realistic indeed. The ground markings are nicely done too, they're nice and crisp, they're not too bright and cartoony, they are slightly imperfect and really I couldn't have asked for more. The taxiway signs are very nicely modelled, they're crisp and clear and easy to read and the grassy areas in general look pretty good. There's a good variety of tones and shades of grass and while there are one or two blurry patches uh, where the grass doesn't grow and the default satellite imagery shows through, these are so few and far between that I don't think they're something you would notice in normal operations. The taxiways too are very nice, there's the odd little anomaly like we see here where there's a bit of missing concrete, but again these are very rare and in general all of the ground looks very nice. I made the mistake of comparing the runways in this add-on with the Google satellite imagery and I saw a grey concrete runway in the real airport where in fact we have a tarmac runway instead here. But don't worry, I've checked and in fact this runway has been resurfaced recently <laughs> since the uh, satellite image was taken. So what we have is accurate and not only is it accurate but it looks really really good. The markings look great with a good amount of dirt on them and there's a nice amount of rubber marking all the way along which looks very very realistic. Runway 2 slash 20 looks very good as well and the materials used match the real thing perfectly. There are concrete panels up at this end and some more of that rather nice tarmac texture down at the other end. Jetstream Designs have done a very nice job with the night lighting. The floodlights create a very realistic glow over the apron and the terminal looks absolutely fantastic lit up at night. You'll notice that the transparent glass retains its tint. Um, we do have a few little graphical anomalies in the form of these bright pinpoint lights. Now I'm not too sure what they're all about to be honest with you. Um, they're not my cup of tea. It's possible they're supposed to represent reflections from aircraft and vehicle lights. Uh, but to me they make the terminal look a little bit like a Christmas tree. So that's a little bit of a shame but uh, it doesn't spoil the overall great nighttime effect here. You'll notice that a variety of different glass textures have been used to create different kinds of tint for different parts of the airport and this to me shows a great amount of attention to detail. It looks really really good. Even the flat static glass textures where there is no transparent glass look pretty good by night. They do give the impression of a building that's being lit from within. The remote stands are also well lit and the taxiway centre and edge line lights look just right. And as you'd expect, the runway lighting is spot on as well. Here's Ollie in the rain and the ground textures look absolutely fantastic when wet. We do of course have the issue of popping transparent windows which aren't shrouded in low visibility conditions and as I've said before that's nothing the developer can fix, that's down to a Sobo. And finally here's Ollie in the snow. And overall I'd say the developer has done a pretty good job within the confines of what Microsoft Flight Simulator is currently capable of. We don't have the continuous uniform blanket of snow that we see in certain sceneries. Instead we have patches where the snow is thicker, patches where it's thinner. I like the way it partially covers the ground markings and over the apron areas at least it looks very very good. 
The story is slightly different over the taxiways and runways. We have the old issue of certain textures having no snow on them at all, as you can see with these patches of asphalt taxiway. You'll also notice that the concrete section of this runway is covered in snow, whereas the asphalt section is completely clear. Now, there are some developers who are making inroads into working around this. Hello, Max. Uh, but by and large, this is a common issue amongst add-ons for Microsoft Flight Simulator. So overall, I'd say the developer's done a reasonably good job here. You'll notice that I've moved my aircraft to a different gate for the conclusion. It was a bit unfortunate that I initially picked one of the few stands that set back from the terminal. Most of the jetways at this airport will connect to your aircraft without breaking apart, because most of them don't have to stretch so far. So I don't think you should let that put you off. Overall, I think Jetstream Designs have done a great job at recreating Orly for Microsoft Flight Simulator. The buildings are well modelled and textured, the ground textures are absolutely fantastic, and so, overall, is the night lighting. The airport is full of life thanks to a good amount of ground clutter and, much as I'd like the option to turn them on or off, I think the static aircraft overall are a positive thing here. There are enough of them to make this feel like a busy airport, but not so many that you'll struggle to find an appropriate gate to park at. Other than that jetway issue, all of the negatives are pretty minor. I wasn't a big fan of the strange pinpoint lights in the glass at night time, and I was a little bit disappointed in the snow away from the terminal areas, especially considering the great job that Jetstream did with the snow at Nantes Atlantique. This remains one of the best implementations of snow I've seen in a simulator. But yes, overall this is a very, very realistic add-on, and if you want to fly from Orly, I think you'll find it's money well spent. I hope you found this review useful. If you have, please do click the thumbs up button, subscribe to my channel and consider making a small donation via Streamlabs or buymeacoffee.com. And also, do please let me know what you call the structure in between a terminal building and a jetway. I have no idea. Anyway, have a great Christmas if that's your thing. Thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you again soon here on Philbert Flies. Bye bye.